Hey guys, Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto, and today we're taking a look at a 1991 Toyota ST185 Celica. This one here is a GT4 version, so that's the four-wheel drive, turbocharged 2.0-liter with a 3 SGTE top-mount intercooled engine. And this one here was Toyota's rally car with fairly good success back in the day. And we don't buy an awful lot of these. We've bought a lot of the 205s, the next generation after this, but not very many of the 185s. Now, throughout the video, I'm going to turn the engine off because it's got pretty bad belt squeal going on with the alternator belt here. And so, let me just switch that off. Also want to mention it does have uh, exhaust leak, and so the engine sounds a little bit more grumbly because of that. Okay, so typically we would let the engine run for the entire time, but that's too noisy. And so, this one has 143,000 kilometers on it, and so higher mileage than they typically have uh, for a car like this, but the ST185s are getting very few and far between, and so just being able to find one, let alone one that is running, is a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so looking in here, it has uh, one heck of an engine. These uh, 3S engines were in use from I think 1986 until like the mid 2000s. They are the same engine as in the Altezza with slightly different bits, turbocharger, different head, that sort of thing. Um, comes with a factory strut tower brace. Actually the first car I ever saw with a factory strut tower brace. Pretty interesting. And something really crazy, take a look at this, the alternator has a cooler on it. And so this air induction pipe comes in. Whoop, cool your alternator in case your alternator overheats while you're racing. And see, that's the thing is these were homologation cars. And so uh, they had to have certain things that the rally cars needed in order to be successful, including that sort of thing. So very cool. There's the turbo right there, right in your face. And it's under a cover that says Chode Paz Torch Air. Hot hands off. Um, and it's... It says in Japanese, uh, that, 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 uh, during some time, be careful. I don't know. Can't really read everything that's on there. Uh, looks like we have an aftermarket air filter there and a cool little twist tie to keep your MAF in place. Okay, gonna lower the hood. And the hood's made out of steel. Oh my gosh. So, go over the auction sheet. And I just want to mention too, that this one here is a GT4A version. And so the GT4 had two different versions, a wide and a narrow, and this one's the wide version. The wide version has about three centimeters on each side, I believe. That's wider than the standard GT4. And then the American ones are all the wide version, whereas the Japanese ones were sold for a couple of years before the wide ones came in. And then came the 4A, this one. And then after the 4A, they all became wide for the later versions of them. Okay, so going over the auction sheet and the damages on the car. So, 142, 150 kilometers, five speed, GT4A, and this is an auction grade 3.5C. It says wide body version, five speed manual, interior and exterior have been cleaned. Uh, Sparco wheels, the wheels suit the car very well. They're a great looking wheel, it looks nice, the white on white. They're a little bit on the small side, and we have good condition tires on here with plenty of tread, 205-55ZR16. But the 16-inch wheels kind of give it that rally look. You know, rally cars didn't have these huge wheels because you're going to be hitting potholes and stuff, just like in real life. If you look closely in here, you have a spacer. And that spacer is well needed because the wheels uh, aren't that low of an offset. Okay, going over the report, the rear seat has some color fade on it, steering wheel wear. Dashboard is cracked. Now, let me get into this right away so I don't forget. The dashboard is cracked, but I couldn't find any, any cracks in it. There are some screw holes right here, but couldn't find the cracks. And we will be showing more of the interior in just a sec. Okay, headliner is dirty. Trunk is scratched and dirty. Underside painted and some surface rust. Now, I believe that the person who sold this car had bought it from auction and then repaired some places and then sold it before. This car previously had corrosion written on the auction sheet. Because we don't have a lift, we can't really take a clean look at that from good angles. From what we can see, 
can't find any signs of corrosion that are underneath there. That's not to say that if you put it on a lift, you won't be able to find any. Okay, wheels scratched, core support dented, small scratches, small dents. And the diagram here says paint cracks on the front bumper, repainted panels here. And a W3 is a very poor paint in this back corner. Okay, so the front bumper looks like somebody just painted over the urethane scratches. Because it's made out of a black material, any scratches are shown really big time. It looks like somebody just painted over those without preparing them. So there are some nicks you can see like this and here. The GT4 has a different front bumper than your uh, standard Celica. You can see it has the fog lights in there that are different. Okay, and the W3 on the back fender here. Look closely here and you can see some spots in the paint. And so this section here was not prepped very well before painting it. Okay, now to go once around it. So the GT4 with the cool hood scoop and the vents there, those are functional vents in the hood that clearly go directly through. Kind of similar to the Impreza in the way that they have those, but the Impreza ones you have to unscrew if you want to use them. These ones are fully open right from the factory. It has the GT4A badging on it, which is kind of unique, but it is in pretty bad condition. You can see the stickers and the badges have peeled. So this section here would come with just a sticker here. Maybe it was a badge, I don't know, but you can see it used to say GT4, and then there's the A badge. And stickers on the side. Stuff like that, if it were really important, is really easy to replicate. Probably hard to find one new though, like those new stickers directly from Toyota. I kind of have a soft spot for these Celicas. My father and my grandfather both owned them. My dad had a 160 series. My grandfather had this series, the 180 series. I think that they're really gorgeous looking cars. Kind of a lost opportunity if I don't put the headlights up, so I'm going to do that now. There we go. I always thought the car looked a little bit concerned with the headlights up. Like, oh no, don't drive me around this track as fast as you're driving me. I'm concerned. Pretty capable car. Okay, I guess I can't do this video without explaining the way that we pronounce uh, Salika. Take a look at this. So this is Japanese. Se li ka. Selika. In Canada we say Selika. In the USA they say Selika. And I'm not going to change the way that I say that word for the video. I'm smiling at Paul there in the background. <laughs> He's heard me <clears throat> be called out so many times on YouTube from people who are like, oh, this guy doesn't know how to say the name of that car. I think he's kind of stupid. Now the interior of the car smells like mold. It seems like they're... I can't find any signs of water damage in the car, but it seems like it may have had some water in there. The car wasn't uh, ventilated properly and has caused some molding. These seats are uh, special for these. Lots of support. GT4 only seats and they're in good shape. They don't have rips, which is great for oh, like almost 150,000 kilometers You would expect some rips in the seat. So good there and we have the standard steering wheel This is what the gauges look like you get your kind of ghetto turbo gauge there Probably not that accurate Kind of like the Supra you have this driver centric section here The ST205 even has it more and the Supra kind of in your face. Passenger, don't look at my stuff. Don't touch my dials. So that's auto AC. S original CD player, pretty cool for 91. Can't open the ashtray, which I guess is a good sign because then probably hasn't been smoked in. Definitely doesn't smell like cigarettes in here. Aftermarket floor mat for the driver and no floor mat for the passenger there. This is a little bit loose, the shifter. And Lumbar support, electronic, uh, and air motor there. Really cool. Into the back seats.
It's funny that they would say that the car was clean. Yeah, ah, here we go. And yet we still have mold on here. And what looks like dust over there. Yep. Yeah, my car was cleaned. Never trust what a salesperson is saying about their car. And into the trunk. And the car reminding me that the headlights are on. Bigger trunk in here than in the Supra, which always strikes me as a strange thing. Spare tire in the back, no signs of rust griblies, but you do have a tire shaped <laughs> cut out there, which is a little bit goofy, but it's a race car. You can tell people that the car goes faster because of it. Okay, so very much love these cars. If I had it my way, I would get a 160 series GT4 just because they're super duper rare. But I very much like the looks of these, the fact that they're four wheel drive and turbo four cylinder, very good package all around. So do like these vehicles. Looks uh, great also with a white on white. All right, so that's gonna be the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments section or check out our website. The link to that's in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.